Uh, we're in the invasion zone, so it's not that surprising to see so much diseased corals. What caused the initial onset? Right now, we don't know. Seventy years ago, the Florida Reef Tract would have, on average, 50% coral cover. Now there's about a 5% coral cover. And with the current disease outbreak, the stony coral tissue loss disease, we're expecting about an average of a 2% coral cover in the next couple of years to come. The stony coral tissue loss disease started in 2014 on a reef off the coast of Miami. And since then, it spread all the way north to Martin County, which is the northernmost part of the reef tract of Florida, and is now south all the way down to Key West. It's something like we've never really seen before in the history of coral disease ecology. That disease has been affecting a lot of the major reef building species that provide that physical foundation for reef structure. It's been causing widespread mortality throughout the entire reef tract with some mortality rates of up to 100% of the species. Coral colony is a hard skeleton and the tissue is made up of all these tiny polyps that are connected to each other and sharing resources. But that tiny layer of tissue is the animal itself. And when it is infected, the tissue actually sloughs off from that coral animal slowly dying as the disease progresses. The Ocean X mission is incredibly wonderful asset for us to use as a tool for the Florida Reef Tract. And then we have the partners at Woods Hole who are studying the microbes in the water column and in the corals, hoping to identify a signature of the sick corals. Hey ladies. Hello. How's the science coming in it's here good. today? Yeah? This disease we believe to be bacterial in nature. The pattern of the disease and the ecology of the disease does suggest that it is waterborne, that currents are moving the disease to reefs over time. There was a lot going on in South Florida uh, at the time of the disease outbreak. It was coincided with a bleaching event that we saw in 2014, so the water temperatures were quite warm. There was a dredging activity that was occurring nearby, and there was also wastewater treatment that gets dumped out into the reef nearby. So there's a lot of different stressors that could be related to the outbreak. We are currently sequencing seawater we isolated from just outside both healthy and diseased corals. In other tropical coral reef environments, we see anywhere from 100 to three to 500 different bacteria in a sample. And what we hope here is that we might be able to see some of those same bacteria. We're gonna lose the whole ecosystem potentially, but that means a loss in biodiversity, erosion from our shorelines because we're not gonna have protection mm -hmm. when storms roll through. And we're gonna lose part of our heritage of Florida. The Montastrias were looking gorgeous yeah, I know. though. I was... They, they were loving this. They were so nice, yeah. <laughs> I was like, don't get diseased. They was look so pretty. are things we can do locally to protect the reefs, and those can include an increased focus on water pollution and water quality, addressing land-based sources of pollution. Offshore oil drilling is definitely an issue. We have all of these threats that we're seeing right now that are impacting the health of our reefs. We need to be able to preserve these ecosystems long into the future. The environment is the economy, and in order to have sustainable, thriving economies in years to come, we need to have a healthy environment. When you dive down onto a reef and it's covered in coral and there's so many fish in front of you that you feel like you got dropped down into an aquarium, that is the most ridiculously inspirational moment you can ask for being a marine scientist. And I'll literally be underwater doing flips, spreading out and enjoying the reef because it's a moment that 
are few and far between these days as the environment changes. It's a life-changing experience when you see something like that.